you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question before listening on. We're going to begin by drawing a picture of the cardboard tube. Now around this cardboard tube, we are going to be wrapping a wire. So let's draw the wire as well. Now we've only showed a few turns of the wire being wrapped around the cardboard tube. Just keep in mind that this would continue all along the length of the cardboard tube. Now it turns out that we know the length of each one of these little segments right here. And that simply turns out to be the diameter of the wire. So from here to here is going to be the 0.1 centimeters or in meters 0.1 times 10 to the minus 2. So that's essentially the the width of one turn of the wire. The next turn of the wire would also be 0.1 times 10 to the minus 2 meters and so with the next turn and the next turn. Now let's just assume for a moment that the length of this cardboard tube is exactly one meter. If we took that one meter and we divided it by the length of each one of these little strips of wire, which we determined to be 0.1 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. If we perform that division, we would see that we would get 1,000 of these little strips of wire all along the length of the cardboard tube. In other words, the value of lowercase n would be 1,000 turns of wire per meter of cardboard tube. So this is the value of n that we're going to be using. Now, of course, the actual length of the cardboard tube was not one meter. It was actually 75 centimeters, or 0.75 meters. So what we'll calculate next is the actual total number of turns of wire. And we do that by taking the number of turns per meter and multiplying it by the actual length of the solenoid. So we're going to go ahead and take our 1,000 turns per meter and multiply it by the actual length of 0.75 meters. And we can see that we get 7.5 times 10 to the power of 2 turns, or 750 turns. So that is the actual number of turns of wire that's going to go along the length of the solenoid. Now we know the magnetic field produced by a solenoid is equal to this expression on the right hand side. What we're going to do is solve for the current that's flowing through the solenoid. So let's divide both sides of the equation by mu times lowercase n. Now the magnitude of the magnetic field was given to us in the question in millitesla. We'll have to multiply that by 10 to the minus 3 to get it into tesla. The constant is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th, and we earlier determined the value of lowercase n. So let's plug in all these known values. When we crunch that down in our calculators, we can see that the current turns out to be approximately 6.37 amps. So this is a value that we're going to hold on to and use in just a moment to calculate the power. Now to get the actual length of wire required for this solenoid, we have to take the number of turns and multiply it by the circumference of the solenoid. And to clarify that point, remember that we're wrapping a wire around a solenoid. We determined earlier that we need 750 turns, so we have to wrap this 750 times. Each one has to traverse a circumference of the solenoid. So to get the total length of this blue wire in this picture, we would have to take the number of turns and multiply it by the actual circumference of the solenoid. Notice that for the diameter, we have to change it into meters by multiplying by 10 to the minus 2. And so we can see the length turns out to be 75 pi meters. The reason we need the length of the wire is because we need to calculate its resistance, which obeys this equation. So all we have to do is plug in the resistivity of copper, multiply it by the length, which we just found, and then divide it by the cross-sectional area. The area will be the cross-sectional area of the wire, which is circular shaped. So we'll end up using pi r squared for the area. Note that the value for resistivity is the value for copper, and it's 1.7 times 10 to the minus 8. Also notice that the radius was converted from the diameter. The diameter of the wire was given to us as 0.1 centimeter, so we had to first multiply that by 10 to the minus 2 to convert it into meters, but then divide it by 2 to change that diameter into a radius. So just take note that the radius is that expression in there. And when you calculate that, you get a resistance exactly equal to 5.1 ohms. So what we do next and to finish off the problem is to take this resistance and to take the current and finally calculate the power because power is equal to the current squared times the resistance. 
And when we plug in our current and resistance, we get a value of power approximately equal to 207 watts. So that is indeed the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and please also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for other videos. You are welcome to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to respond via YouTube.